What is that? He wants to know why you had your head up your ass today. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, that's funny. Oh jeez. Kind of I don't even know how to respond. <laughs> what kind of problems is Jerry Goff present? Well, obviously, he spreads the ball all over the field. I mean, you know, you hear say that a lot, but he has five receivers, receivers, wide receivers that have somewhere between 40 and 50 yards a game receiving. Then he has a tight end that has probably around 35 or 36 yards a game receiving. And then he has a running back that probably has another 35 or 40. Uh, so it isn't like you can just, you know, bracket people or, or uh, you know, uh, zero your coverage on um, one guy. I mean, it's there's seven guys that, that you better know where they are and, and you better be sound. And uh, so that I think that's probably the, the the best thing he does. And he's so efficient in in doing that. And the ball comes out really quick uh, on the release and throws a lot of good stuff on timing. Does he remind you of anybody you went up against when you were at West Virginia? Uh, that's a that's a good question. There were some pretty good quarterbacks uh, in in that league at that particular time. Uh, I, I would say, you know, uh, I believe it was who was it, Bryce Petty at Baylor. You know, I mean, because the ball just it just comes out quick, and they got you spread from sideline to sideline, and and uh, it's it's no doubt it's a unique challenge. Is this game kind of similar to Washington State? We see a disparity between the passing game and the running game. Yeah, it, it's it it's similar, but it's different. You know, all the spread offenses, you know, they are are all under the same umbrella, but there's always some little uh, variances in in the scheme that make them all different. Uh, so it, it's uh, it, they have their own. You know, it's the Tony Franklin system, obviously, and and uh, which is a little bit different than, than Mike Leach and, and those guys in their version of the spread. But it's like this one team that you maybe kind of like lull you to sleep with passes and then you know hit a big run. Yeah, I mean they're they're like the, the difference I see in these guys. I mean again, just like the wide receivers, they got four running backs that are all. I mean they're all different size, different you know skill sets, and and uh, so they're very balanced on and all that. So. You not only have to account for those guys out of the backfield with the screens and the and and then the uh, the passing game, but you also have to be able to, you know, they, they they throw the ball and then they run the ball to keep you honest almost, uh, but they run it effectively, you know. So they you got to make sure, like you say, you can't sit them, you know, let them sit there and then all of a sudden they hand the ball off and it's a big play. I was impressed with Solomon Dean's first game at safety. What did you see from him? Uh, I tell you what, I I've, I've been impressed with him ever since we put him in the game against Washington. I mean. You know, we put him in the game against Washington, and and uh, not just him, but I mean, we didn't give up a touchdown. I don't believe the rest of the game, and then and then to step in and do what he's done at a new position. You know, that's that's fairly unique, and especially at this stage of the year, uh, for him to do what. But but again, it, that's what that's what being a team truly uh, exemplifies is guys step up and they're asked, you know. Uh, to do things, you know, we talked about Tony Longino earlier, going from being your third leading tackler on the team and moving to, to devil linebacker from Willie, and then all of a sudden he just turns out to be the Pac-12 player of the, uh, of the week twice in a row. And so Solomon's basically doing the same thing uh, in the secondary. So it's very impressive. What, what's happened to Tony? I mean, he, he was, he's been solid all year, but these last two games, it just seems like he's taken it to another level. Well, I think when you're a senior, that boy, you get to close, man, you start seeing that. You know the end is, is is right in front of me, and, and I think I think it was a combination of a lot of things. I think it just it takes a while to get you know adapted to. I mean he's beat up for a while. I mean you're sitting there leaning on six foot five, six six, three hundred plus pound guys, and man it's just different than playing at the second level when you're up in the trenches, which you know that position is. It, it is. It's a transition, and, and uh, it just took him a while to get comfortable, I think. And, and once that he has, man, you know, he's, uh, and you couple that with the fact that, that uh, he sees the light at the end of the tunnel and it's coming to an end fast, and he's going to make the most of it. He almost like created a domino effect. I mean, going from Will from Will to Devil, and then to Will, he got Christian Sam blossoming and DJ Calhoun. <laughs> it, it, it just takes time. I mean, you know, like I say, even those those guys played at times last year. It's different than playing and starting and, and, and playing that position. But I do see Christian, I mean, he's playing his best football. I mean, 12 tackles over two weeks ago, 10 tackles the, the other day, you know. Uh, so he is by far playing his best uh, football of the year. And uh, obviously it's at the right time. And, and uh, I do, I think it does motivate people now. Now you got competition at inside backer with Salamo and those guys. You know, they, they try to outperform one another. Thanks, Keith. You bet. <laughs>